Let's move on to item number 11. The table shows Gerald's height from age 14 to 20. Find the average rate of change in inches in Gerald's height from age 14 to 20. Did you go for four thirds, three fourths, one half, or five eighths? So take a look at the table and what do you think? So if you see an example of a problem like this, or if you see a problem like this, always remember that the average is simply the slope. And so we're asked for 14 to 20. So we will, be, we will disregard all of this in the middle. We will just focus on these two points. We will have it as a coordinate pair as 1461, and we have 2069. So we will just get the slopes of these two points. So for that one, for the uh, y's, we have 69 minus 61. That's your change in y all over 20 minus 14, which is your change in x. So from here, simplifying in the numerator, you have 8. And the denominator is 6, so you have slope of 8 over 6, which simplifies to 4 thirds. Hence, letter A is the correct answer. Letter B, I mean letter A. Number 12. The points negative 4A, 1, 3, and 4, 18 are collinear. Find A. Did you go for negative 22, negative 14, 14, or 22? So remember this. If you are given three points on a Cartesian plane, they are collinear. If, if you pick any two points, then their slopes have to be equal. So in my case here, I pick, I solve for the slope of negative 4a and 1, 3. So, so remember the formula, this one. That's 3 minus a. That's y sub 2 minus y sub 1, 3 minus a. All over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. We have 1 minus negative 4. And I equated it with a slope of 1, 3 and 4, 18. The slope of 1, 3, and 4, 18 is 18 minus 3 all over 4 minus 1 here. So the, the left-hand side simplifies to 3 minus a all over 5 equals, for the right-hand side, that's 15 thirds. 15 thirds simplifies to 5. That's why 3 minus a all over 5 equals 5. Multiplying both sides by 5 to clear off fractions, we have 3 minus a equals 25. And subtracting both sides by 3, I have negative a equals 22. Multiplying both sides by negative 1, we have a equals negative 22. And that is letter A. I hope you got it also. Number 13, the graph of the linear function f passes through the points a3 and negative 2b in the xy plane. If the slope of the graph of f is 2, which of the following is true? Did you go for 2a minus b equals 1, a plus b equals 1, a minus 2b equals 2, or 2a plus b equals negative 1. What do you think? So to make the long story short, all you have to do is find the slope of a3 and negative 2b and equate that with their value with the value of the slope, which is 2. So with such, we have b minus 3. This is y sub 2 minus y sub 1, all over negative 2 minus a, 
which is x sub 2 minus x sub 1 equals 2 as your slope. Multiplying both sides by negative 2 minus a to clear of fractions, we have b minus 3 equals negative 2 times 2, it's negative 4. Negative a times 2, it's negative 2a. So you have there. And also, adding both sides by 2a, so this uh, negative 2a will become plus 2a at the left. This minus 3 becomes plus 3 on the right-hand side. Simplifying things will give you 2a plus b equals negative 1, letter D. 14. In a right triangle, tangent x equals 3. So what is the positive value of secant x? Did you go for 2 square root of 5, square root of 10, 3 square root of 2, or square root of 15? So for this one, we could actually use the uh, utilize the Pythagorean theorem and solve for the remaining side of your triangle. However, for this case, I will use a different method and utilize the fact that secant squared x is equal to tangent squared x plus one. This is an example of a Pythagorean of a trigonometric identity which is related to the Pythagorean uh, theorem or the Pythagorean theorem was used for such. Um, also, for this case, so if we will solve for secant x, we will just divide both, uh, I mean, take the square root of both sides. So, so the secant x is equal to, because it's even, the index is even, so we have to place a plus minus. Tan, uh, the square root of tangent squared x plus 1. But our problem is only asking of the positive value. Hence, we will remove the negative or disregard the negative and adapt the formula secant x equals square root of tangent squared x plus 1. Tangent squared x means you square the value of the tangent. Since tangent x is 3, so it becomes the square root of the square of 3 plus 1, that's 9 plus 1, which is 10. And secant x, therefore, is square root of 10, letter B. Number 15. In a right triangle, if sine theta equals 2 thirds, what is cosine of the quantity 90 degrees minus theta? Did you go for square root of 5 over 9, 4 ninths, 2 thirds, or 3 halves? What do you think? If you are just keen enough, you could actually see that by the complementary angle property of sine and cosine, it is known that sine theta is equal to cosine 90 degrees minus theta. That is why the answer for this problem is still two-thirds. Letter C. Okay, I hope you're doing good so far. 16. In the triangle shown, AB equals BC equals 10 and AC equals 12. What is cosine theta? So how about this one? What's the cosine of this angle? Theta, did you go for four fifths, three fourths, three fifths, or five fourths? So it's noteworthy to say that ABC is isosceles, right? And it is in fact a theorem that if you draw through the vertex angle the altitude of the triangle, then this altitude also serves as median. That is why it divided AC into two equal parts. That's why this part here is six and this other segment is also six. And uh, of course, this has to be a right angle because it's an altitude. In fact, this line is an altitude. It's also a median. It's an angle by sector. So this angle here 
is equal to this angle, and it's also a perpendicular bisector. Now, for this one, so you have here the triangle. This is 6, this is 10. And by the Pythagorean theorem, you could verify on your own the length of the altitude through B, this one, is 8. You could see that 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. So you could verify on your own, this is 8. However, we are looking for cosine theta. And when we speak about cosine theta, it's the ratio of the adjacent side all over the hypotenuse. So focusing only on this triangle, because it is the one with a tri with a, uh, acute angle theta. So the adjacent in relation to theta, it's this six. By the way, the six is the adjacent. The eight here is the opposite in relation to theta. And BC here is your hypotenuse. That is why you have cosine theta equals 6 over 10. This is the adjacent over the hypotenuse 10. Simplifying 6 tenths by dividing both numerator and denominator by 2, you get cosine theta as 3 fifths letter C. Number 17. Which of the following could never be a value of sine x? Did you go for 0 0.4, 0 0.95, 1, or 1.1? What do you think? So please be reminded of this. This is the graph of sine of f of x equals sine x. And uh, in fact, you could continue it as, long, as much as you want, but for now, what is shown is within the interval from 0 to 2 pi. As what you could see here, the highest possible value sine theta could get is when uh, is that your f of x should be 1, and the lowest it could get is negative 1. Hence, it could be seen that sine theta, that sine x, ranges only from negative 1 to 1. But zero, and we see that 0 0.4, 0 0.95, and 1 are all within negative 1 to 1. But 1.1 is outside already of the range. Hence, letter D is impossible. It could never be a value of sine x. D is the correct answer. 18. Based on the triangle, what is sine 2a? Did you go for 4 square root of 5 all over 3? 4 square root of 5 all over 9? Square root of 5 all over 6? Or 2 ninths? You could actually verify by the Pythagorean theorem that this is true. Because 2 squared plus square root of 5, that becomes 4 plus 5, which is 9. And if you square 3, it's 9. So it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Now, what is sine 2a? For sine 2a, it is known. Uh, it, it is, in fact, an identity. Uh, but before I give you the identity, from here, sine a, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So that's square root of 5 all over 3. And for cosine a, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. That's why cosine A is two-thirds. And uh, by the double angle identity, we have sine 2A is equal to 2 sine A cosine A. We will not derive this anymore. So by substitution, we have sine 2A equals 2 times square root of 5 all over 3 times two-thirds. And that gives you 4 square root of 5 all over 9 or B. Because 2 times 2, it's 4 times square root of 5, it's 4 square root of 5, all over 3 times 3, which is 9. 19. What is 2 pi over 3 radians in degrees? Did you go for 110, 120, 130, or 140? 
to convert radians to degrees, it is very important to multiply with the conversion factor, which is 180 degrees all over pi. Take note of that. If you're converting radians to degrees, multiply by 180 degrees over pi. But if you're going to have it uh, degrees to radians, you will multiply by pi over 180. So for this case, we will multiply by 180 degrees all over pi. And with such, the pi's will be canceled. And 180 degrees divided by 3, that's 60. And 2 times 60 will give you 120 degrees. Letter B. 20. If, cos if cosine x equals 3 fifths and BC equals 12, how long is AC? Did you go for 7, 8, 9, or 10? What is your guess or what is your answer? So for this one, it is important to note that the remaining side here should be 4. Because if you could see 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is 25, is equal to 5 squared, which is 25. So it satisfies the Pythagorean theorem. Or you may solve it on your own. And you could actually see that cosine x here is 3 fifths. That's the given. And... If you will, because remember, BC and AC were involved here. So if you could see the ratio of BC to AC is 4 is to 3. Right? But remember, according to the problem, the value of BC is 12. That's why I substituted BC with 12. So 12 all over, over AC equals four thirds. And with such, um, I multiply both sides by the LCD. So we have four AC, or I did like some sort of cross multiplication. AC times four is four AC. 12 times three is 36. Dividing both sides by four gives you the length of AC, which is nine. Letter, C. I hope you got it.